Okay, we almost got it all figured out, but here's what we still didn't explain. These two bunches of files over here are two separate translation units, which have nothing to do with each other up to a point where we need to start including all the files from the beginning, iostream and soldier.h, everything from the beginning, as if we never had a look at them from before because it's a completely different compiling session, it's a separate translation unit. If so, then I don't get it. What was the whole point of compiling this translation unit in the first place? The whole point was that so I should be able to use the soldier class inside of my program, inside of this file over here, tutorial1.cpp, or maybe some other source file I have somewhere else in my program. At this point though, it looks like all we have over here in this translation unit is the declaration of the soldier class. But we don't have our definition of the soldier class. That was all typed up into this soldier.cpp file right over here, separated into its own source file for the reasons of object-oriented programming. We didn't type up its definition into the soldier.h file because that would not be object-oriented programming. We need to separate it into separate files. So it looks as if we missed the whole point. In our translation unit over here, we don't have anything to do with the definition of the soldier class. And we must have it. The declaration is not enough. If you ever make a program in which you declare a function like do stuff over here, and you start making use of it, like we learned, it's like telling the, pro the compiler, yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll pay you back later. Sometime in the future, you're going to bump into the definition of the do stuff function, so don't worry, just let me use it, okay? Eventually, though, the compiler is going to realize that, hey, there's no definition of the do stuff function. Even though we declared it, we don't have the definition. It's in a totally different translation unit. Well, that's where the linker comes into play. You see, what the compiler does is it compiles every single source file into its own translation unit and produces a bunch of translation unit files, which are actually called object files, which finish with the extension .obj. Each one of these object files now contain all of the header files and one source file of this specific translation unit. It takes the whole mixture of whatever was compiled before, the header files and one source file, and keeps it all together into one file of the object file. After that comes the linker, which basically takes all of these translation unit files, all of these object files, and basically combines them all together to produce one single file, which is your program.exe file. But before the linker does that, the linker checks to make sure that you fulfilled all of your promises when you declared something to make sure that you define it somewhere. Here is where the connection of all the translation units come together. At this point, if something is defined in one file, it will be good enough for another file, even if it's in a separate translation unit, which in our case means that even though at first these were two different separate worlds, and over here it looked like we only declared the soldier class, but we didn't get its definition. Only over here in this other world, in this other translation unit, do we have the definition of the soldier class. But it all comes together thanks to the linker. The linker goes from one translation unit to another and makes sure that anything that was declared in one place is defined in at least somewhere else. Actually, it makes sure that it's defined only once somewhere else. The linker is okay if it finds out that you included the soldier.h file many different times, and that you included the iostream file many different times, as long as they were in separate translation units. But that only works for header files. For the definition, for the implementation of some file, you need to only have that once in the whole entire project. And once you made sure to declare and define the soldier class once in this project, you can go ahead and include the header as many times as you'd like in any other translation unit you need, and the linker will make it all work out. So the compiler makes sure that everything is declared before it's defined, or that it's declared before it's used. Everyone in their own separate translation unit.
and then it produces object files. The linker takes a look inside these object files and makes sure that everything is defined only once and the linker doesn't mind to find out that everything was declared a couple of different times in each different translation unit and finally it proceeds to produce your program your .exe file. So now we solved our problem of being able to carry out both rules first of all of making sure that everything is declared before we start defining or using it and second of all to make sure that everything is nicely separated into different files because of the rules of object-oriented programming. The solution is simply like this. First of all go ahead and declare and define your class put the declaration in a header file and put the definition in a source file, a .cpp file and of course don't forget to include the header file inside of the source file so that the compiler will know what you're talking about when it's compiling this specific translation unit. Now once you've declared and defined this class you are ready to go ahead and start using this class in any other source file that you'd like. If you want to create an instance of the soldier class for example in your main function you can go ahead and do that, just don't forget to, of course, again, include the soldier header file to satisfy the compiler with the declaration of the soldier class. We're telling the compiler, go ahead and look into that soldier.h file so that you can go ahead and learn what is a soldier class. And I know, I know, it's only the declaration, but don't worry, you'll get to the definition eventually. So now the compiler will allow us to instantiate, to create instances of the soldier class in our program. Now the compiler reaches the end of this translation unit and it still didn't come across the definition of the soldier class. Uh oh, is that a problem? Well, lucky thing that the compiler has one more ounce of patience for us and he's going to leave it up to the linker to make one last check to make sure that we declared and we defined the soldier class somewhere else in this program. Some other translation unit somewhere else has to have defined the soldier class. And we already made sure to do that when we defined it in the soldier.cpp file. And so it all comes together at the end. It compiles and links well and everything works. This is all quite important to understand. So if you didn't get it the first time around I suggest you try again to watch these videos about this subject pay attention to everything explained, pause the videos as needed, think about it, review it, and understand it well. We type up the declaration of a class in a header file to satisfy object-oriented programming, putting the, de the declaration of something somewhere else than its definition. We type up the source file, the definition of this class, because we must satisfy the linker to make sure that this class is defined somewhere in this project and it should be defined somewhere else than the header file which is why we give it its own cpp file and finally anywhere else where we want to make use of this class you should once again include the header the declaration of the class to satisfy the compiler who needs to have at least the declaration, not necessarily the definition, that he's going to leave over to the linker to take care of, and then everything works. If you understood all that, you're awesome.